Today, we're doing our third, this is the sixth week of our class. Um, we have two more weeks, and today we're doing our third application week, where, again, as I've said in this class before, it doesn't help for me to stand up here and do the Bible study for you or just give you a bunch of concepts. This class is about you learning the practical application of how to do Bible study. The last two weeks we've been focusing on inductive Bible study, which is where you take a passage of Scripture, as you know, and you, you follow a, a disciplined process to learn everything you can from that passage, letting the Scripture speak to you before you ask any other commentators or any other sources. So it's letting the Bible speak directly to you, and letting the Bible be the primary source for the Bible to understand it. Today I want to pick what I think is the, the second most useful, and for some of you it may be even more useful, uh, approach to Bible study, and, that, and it's one of the ones that is in Rick Warren's book, and that is a topical Bible study. This, uh, I want to give you a brief introduction this morning on what topical Bible study is, and then I'm going to turn you loose again. I'm going to let, turn, form you into little groups as we did last time, and I'm going to give you a, a form to work with. It's actually one that was in Rick Warren's book, for those of you who have his book and uh, let you spend some time working on a topical Bible study. But let me spend a little time introducing you to the idea of topical Bible study as different from an inductive Bible study, okay? Um, a topical Bible study is where you focus on a single topic, or word, or theme, but topic, to discover as much as possible about what the Bible says about it in Scripture. Now you'll notice the difference here. We're not starting with a passage of Scripture and saying, what do we need to learn about, what can we learn about this, what is God saying in this passage of Scripture? It's sort of turning it inside out and saying, there is a topic that I, I want or need to learn about, and then looking for everything that the Bible can teach you or tell you about that topic. There are a number of benefits that you have from this approach. One is, it enables you to study God's Word systematically, logically, and in an orderly way. What I mean by that is, you could, as a life's work, you could sit down and create every, every topic that you could possibly imagine, like every doctrine. You know, what are the major doctrines of the church? And you could go in and systematically study every one of those doctrines as a topic that the Bible teaches about. Um, and it's a very systematic kind of approach. The second, a second advantage to it is it gives you perspective and balance by examining the whole Bible's content on a given topic. For instance, if you take a passage of Scripture, and inductive Bible study is still probably the most important way that you'll do Bible study, but when you study uh, 2 John, for instance, you got what John was talking about to the people he was writing to. But it's very likely that Paul, or Peter, or James, or the writer of Hebrews, or maybe even an Old Testament writer, also had things to say about that, about, about the, the topics, the material, the information, the issues that John was talking about. Well, doing an inductive Bible study does not take you to those other places necessarily. It might if you do the study and you say, okay, here are passages that have that same word in there, but not in the same way, not to the same extent. A topical Bible study gives you a chance to look at what everything, what the whole Bible and all the different Bible writers have to say about a particular topic. So it gives you a scope of understanding that sometimes you may miss in an inductive Bible study. The third advantage, I believe, or benefit, is that it allows you to study a topic that is of particular interest or about which you need to know more. If you've got a problem with an issue or somebody asks you a question you don't know the answer to, this allows you to research that particular thing in a way that an inductive Bible study does not. If, if you're ever doing a study to teach, and the main point of that is, you know, baptism. Well, you can do a topical Bible study of baptism and find out everything that, that Scripture teaches you about it. Or it may be that you've got something you're really not clear about. You know, what is the Lord's Supper? You know, what is communion? And you want to find out about it in order to understand what you ought to believe about it. Well, you can do a topical study on that. It's great if you're doing a Bible study or a devotional, or you're getting ready to preach a sermon, a topical Bible study. You want to do an inductive of the passage you're using, but topical gives you a lot of the other sort of content from Scripture. So it can be very, very useful. 
It also enables you to study the great themes or doctrines of Scripture. I said a minute ago that you might want to think about at least part of your Bible study, going through and, and, and making a list of all the great doctrines of the church that you can think of. Or the sacraments of the church, or you know the, the doctrine of justification. What is justification? What does it mean? Well, what does the Bible say about it? That's a topical study. The fifth benefit is that it lends itself to lively discussion. This is a great thing to use in a group because as you dig into this and it causes you to think about what the Bible is saying about a particular topic or theme, a lot of discussion comes out of this. More so probably even an inductive Bible study that's done in a group. And finally, it gives some variety to your lifetime commitment. There's an assumption in there, by the way. To your lifetime commitment to personal Bible study because there's virtually an unlimited number of topics. I think my personal counsel would be to you that you intermix inductive Bible study where you take passages and focus on those with topical Bible studies where you're taking themes or topics and developing an understanding of what all of Scripture says about those things. Because that variety gives you more rounding and gives you a better, a better understanding. Okay? So, let's talk about what you need to do a topical Bible study and what the steps are. Are you all clear on what a topical Bible study is first? Is it different than an inductive study? You start with a topic instead of starting with a passage of Scripture. The tools you need are pretty much the same as for any good Bible study. You need a, a, a good study Bible, a topical Bible, and a good concordance. Preferably, or ideally, an exhaustive concordance. And remember what an exhaustive concordance is? Who can tell me? Every word in the Bible is included. You can look up any word that is in the Bible. The only thing you need to make sure of is that the exhaustive concordance you have matches the version of the Bible you're using, or you're not going to be able to find all those words. Um, you will be able to find, like if you look up a soweth <laughs> in, the, in the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance to the King James Bible, it'll tell you everywhere that occurs. If you go to those verses, you then will see how that word is translated in a more modern English version like the NIV or the New American Standard or things like that. So you can still use it, but it's, it's, you have to do sort of a translation process. So it's better to have a concordance that matches the version you're using, that's keyed to that version. Do you understand what I mean by that? Okay. Um, then what are the steps for topical Bible study? Pretty straightforward. First thing you do is select your topic. Just like an inductive Bible study, you started out by selecting your passage, what passage you were going to focus on. Here, you identify your topic. What is it that you're going to study? Then, you identify a list of related words, synonyms, or antonyms. If you picked um, justification, all right? You know what justification means? What are some of the synonyms that you might use for justification? Sanctification, um, holiness, Etc. You get the idea. And then you might also want to start with some synonyms so that you get the other side of it. So any topic that you pick, one of the first things you do after you pick the topic is figure out every other synonym, every other way that might be referred to in the Bible, in other words, in order to be able to chase down all those other references. One of the things that you'll, you'll get is that if you start with a, with a topical word, a topic or a word for this kind of study, if when you begin going to a topical Bible, or a concordance for that, frequently you'll bump into those words. I'm going to give you an example of that in a few minutes. So identify a list of related words, especially synonyms and antonyms. Then collect all the Bible references that you can that are related to the topic and to the, to the related words. And how would you do that? Concordance. Concordance? What else? Cross-reference. Cross references. Well, you have to go to. You have to find the verses first before you use cross references. What other than concordance? You get to cross reference, but that's not the first one. Dictionary, dictionary Bible dictionary. Topical Bible. topical Bible. I was waiting for it. It's a topical Bible study. So the topical Bible is obviously a critical place to start. Topical Bible concordance. That will lead you to particular verses, and then when you get into those verses, the cross references will take you to other verses. Right? Do you all understand what I'm talking about? Because you've been studying this stuff, right? And we don't have a Well, there is a topical Bible in that book in front of you. Okay. Yeah. That's the reason that I, if you're taking this for credit, that's the reason I made you buy an NIV study Bible. Is any study Bible worth, worth its salt? The NIV study Bible has the longest concordance, 
you know, the most complete concordance, and the most complete topical Bible of any study Bible that's ever been printed. And that's why I made you buy that if you're doing this for credit, so that even if you don't have a separate topical Bible or a separate concordance, you've got a pretty darn good one in that one book, which people are still complaining to me about having to carry it around. <laughs> Jeez, folks, come on. All right, so you collect all the Bible references you can, related to that topic and, and the related words. Then you consider each one of those references individually. You look it up, you read it, you think it through, you ask as many questions as possible about it, and then you write it down. Especially when you look up the verses, you ask yourself, what does this tell me about this topic? How does this relate to this topic? How does this inform me about my topic? Right? So you have to think about it a little bit. Christianity is not for people who don't think, no matter what some people seem to, show. Right. Seem to think. Okay? You gotta think about this stuff. Then you want to compare and group those references based upon similarities. If you end up with 20 scripture verses that you really feel comment on or add to you under, your understanding of that topic, you may end up saying there are four or five sort of groupings. You know, these four verses are addressing the same aspect of my topic. These three verses are addressing a different aspect, and you just start organizing them. Just like you were, if, if, this is sort of a, a, a mini fun way, like you were doing a term paper. You guys have all done term papers, where you get all the information, and then you decide, well, how do I sort this so that it makes sense? And mostly you begin to see which things relate to each other and start, start grouping them, all right? Then you condense your study into an outline. You take those groupings, you make them the main divisions, you decide what subdivisions are, and you group the related verses or information underneath that. You outline what you've learned by looking this stuff up as related to your topic. And then you conclude your study, once you've got that outline, by doing two things. You summarize your findings in a brief paragraph. What have you now learned about your topic? Write it down. Write a paragraph. And secondly, write out any applications. Okay, now that you've learned everything as far as you can that the Bible teaches you about this topic, does that affect your life? Is there some way you need to now apply this to your life? Either change the way you're thinking, maybe it changed the way you need to act. How do you apply that? Those are the steps. Any questions about that? Can I make a comment? Sure. Um, one of the things that may be helpful, I don't know if, if that would be suitable here, but in the Strong's Concordance, like if you take love, and it's got those numbers that go to the Greek or the Hebrew. Right. And there's like, I don't know how many different definitions of love and how it's used differently. Yeah. You can check, you can go to, to those numbers and find a tremendous topical wealth. You can. In, in, in that by going to the original language and seeing where that word is in the text in its original language because love is not translated the same. Right. Every time. There were a lot of different Hebrew and Aramaic even and Greek words that got that when they translated into English, they translated them love. But there's subtle differences between those Greek and Aramaic and Hebrew words that got translated love. And so this is sort of the next level of a topical study. You remember that the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, which has every <coughs> word in the, the Strong's is every word in the King James, Strongest is an NIV version of that. Um, you can look up any particular word and it has a number next to it. Well, those numbers, codes, are coded, are linked back to the words in the original language, the Greek, Hebrew, or Aramaic. They're, they're parts of, Dan, of uh, the Old Testament, like part of half of Daniel is written in Aramaic or Chaldean. That was a Semitic language related to Hebrew that was spoken in Babylon. And since the the Jews were in exile in Babylon, a lot of them began to speak Aramaic. In fact, by, by the time of Jesus and Paul, Aramaic was the more common street language over Hebrew. So, some of it's written in Aramaic. But the strong numbers, the numbers that are in Strong's, you can trace those back. Like if you, if you look up the word, um, you know, the word love, it will give you all the different versions of that, and you can look up what the original language <coughs> versions of those were and begin to trace down, like through Vine's, you know, Vine's uh, word dictionaries and things, what the subtle differences are. The example I gave you is like, it is, it's sort of like 
we have the word snow. Well, they say that the Eskimos, the Inuit language, has how many is it? Somebody tell me, 27 or something different words for snow. Something like that. Because for them, they had subtleties of understanding about what snow was like that we don't have. Well, the same thing is true, to a lesser degree, in a lot of the words, especially words like love. How many degrees of love are there? Well, in the biblical language, there are subtleties that are reflected in that. For instance, um, the passage where Paul is, or where, where Jesus is talking to Peter after he's resurrected, and he says, Peter, do you love me? And Peter says, Lord, you know I love you. And the Lord says, well, feed my sheep. And then Jesus says, well, Peter, do you love me? And he says, Lord, you know all things, you know that I love you. And Jesus says, oh, well, feed my lambs. And then he says, Peter, do you love me? Well, you read that and you go, Jesus, he's answered you twice, why are you asking him again? But there are different words. When Jesus says, Peter, do you agape me? This is the sort of divine, all-encompassing love. And Peter says, Lord, you know I phileo you. You know I love you like a brother. Very different kind of love. And Jesus goes, oh, well, feed my sheep. And so he comes back until at the very end, Peter says, Lord, you know I agape you. And it was at that point that Peter is reconciled with Jesus. Now, unless you have studied that a little bit, you don't understand what's going on in that whole conversation. At least not the depth of it. Okay. So, there's an example where going back and, you know, what, what John's mentioning, if you get into this, and I hope you do, I hope some of you do, you don't have to learn Hebrew and Aramaic and Greek in order to do some of this, because there are tools available. But you can get into even more subtle kinds of topical studies on these things by understanding that if you go, if you do use some, some of the tools that are available in English to go back to the meaning of some of the original languages, then there, there can be good value in that. And I think that one example sort of gives you that, right? Questions about that? I am not requiring you to go back and study the Hebrew and Aramaic and Greek today, <laughs> but it might be a good idea for you to be prepared, you know, at some point to, to look into that. And if somebody's interested, I'll be happy to talk to you about that. Um, so, the, the, I want to give you one more background kind of thing for this. Um, R.A. Torrey, and this is actually, I have this, I did some research on topical, and I, I had this printed out, and on my desk, and I go back into Rick Warren's book and rediscover the fact that he actually quotes the, exactly this from R.A. Torrey. R.A. Torrey was a, a um, Christian uh, minister, a, a scholar, a biblical theologian. Torrey has three suggestions for how to do a satisfying topical Bible study. The first thing he says is be systematic. Take it a step at a time in a systematic way. Don't jump around. Don't be undisciplined or haphazard. Don't run here and then, oh, run there and something else. Go through, list your words, list your ideas as completely as possible, possible as comprehensively as possible, and then take them one at a time and work them. Okay? Don't be like the cowboy who jumped on his horse and rode off in all directions at once, which so many people are prone to do. Take it one, you know, figure out what you're going to be looking for, and then take it one at a time and work with it. The second thing is be thorough. Once you actually uh, identify your, your topic and your words, try to find every verse that you can. Now, you're not going to be too exhaustively thorough today, well, when we do this as an exercise. But every verse that you can that's related to that topic, if you, if you get into this, I mean, and you're really doing a topical study on something that's important to you, and most of these topical studies should be, because we're talking about topics that are, that are, uh, critical, that are in God's Word for us, then if you do that thoroughly, you can have some satisfaction at the end of this that you, you know everything the Bible says about a given topic. And don't you think there's quite a bit of power in that? I mean, power in a positive sense, that, that, it's, that this is an important thing, to be able to say... I've done a topical study of baptism, and I really do feel like I know everything that the Bible teaches about baptism. That's a good thing. So if you're thorough, you can end up with a really comprehensive sense of everything the Bible would want you to know about whatever topic that you selected. And the third thing is, be exact. Try to get the exact meaning out of every verse you study. Don't just be superficial. Really think about it. Dig into it a little bit. And this means you do use the cross-references, you do use the footnotes in your study Bible, those kinds of things. Be sure that you examine, for instance, the context. You do need to consider the context when you do this, just like when you did the, um, the inductive Bible study. You remember that context means 
what, what is the surrounding information? Who wrote it? Who were they writing to? Uh, what was the historical situation? What, what topics were they? All of the kind of general stuff. And again, one of the reasons that you have the Topical Study Bible is that, that uh, or the, I'm sorry, the NIV Study Bible, is that in the introductory material, in the footnotes, etc., it will give you a lot of that. Even though you're not doing a passage of scripture that you can go to the introduction to that book, when, when you go, when your topical um, study takes you to a, a verse of scripture, there almost always, if there's some contextual issue that will help you understand it, it's in the footnotes. So it's going to be right in front of you, even if you're not talking about a passage of scripture, but I mean a, a section of scripture, but passages that are through the Bible. Any questions about that? Well, in the uh, Rick Warren book, there is a four-page topical study form. And it starts with the um, a, a form, the place to identify the topic, then a complete list of words that you think are related to that topic, <coughs> synonyms, antonyms, then a place to collect Bible references related to those, then a way to consider each of those references individually so that you can consider cross-references, observations. That's where you start linking them together. Then a place where you can begin to do a condensed outline. And then finally, your conclusions. Okay, now, I have this for you to work from. Just what you need, more paper, right? There's two of those. John, would you pass the cookies out? Okay, uh, here's what we're going to do. Same thing that we did last time. Um, we're going to break up into groups, but before we do, I want us to agree on a topic. I, I want us to have one topic that everybody's studying so we can come back together and consider, consider that. Uh, Does, um, well, I'm going to propose a topic, and you guys tell me if this is just really a problem for you, then fine. But I think this will be a useful one. The topic I would propose that we study for the next hour and a half or so is predestination. <laughs> very, I'm very Presbyterian. I mean, it's obviously one people have different thoughts about. Well, what does the Bible really say about it? To help us get started, before I let you break up into groups, what are some of the words that would be synonyms or would be related to that you want to look at? Present predestination. Election? Foreknowledge. Foreknowledge? Or foreknew? There's two ways to think about that. Foreknew? Election? Foreknowledge or foreknew? Preordained. The word providence is sometimes used, meaning God's plan for things. What about chosen? Chosen. chosen yeah. Also, the word adoption is sometimes used. Okay, now. If you go, I want you all to do this right now. Go into the topical. Who doesn't have an NIV study Bible? Has everybody got one or got one sitting next to you? Because I have, a, I have two or three back here that, that I can loan you if you want. Go on the NIV study Bible to the back to the topical uh, guide right now. Everybody find the topical guide. It comes before the concordance and stuff. And look up predestination. And tell me what it says. Election refers you to election. Election or what else? Providence. Providence. That's why I said providence when you because I already did it. Um, all right. I'm going to let you for the next hour plus work on this as groups, and then we're going to come back together. So what I want you to do is, Jackson, if you would turn around and work. Well, it would probably be easier if I just moved over Okay, why don't you move over to the chair already. Mock sets, would you turn around and work with the printies? Carolyn, Sierra, and Aaron, turn around and work with our Mexicano old friends. <laughs> Ruth, 
Tina and Bob, if you would turn around and work with Jane and the, um, the Harringtons, and Frankies, and Roz, if you all would work with Mickey and Rachel, the five of you, and I know you're kind of stuck back there, but if you can, if you can come around on this side, maybe the the uh, Plenkies and work with them. Any questions about what your assignment is? All right, I'm going to be in my office. If anybody needs me or has a question or gets stuck, come and get me. I'm right the other side of that mirror. Okay. Okay. If you've got a question about how this process works, feel free to go to the Rick Warren book because he talks about it.